Welcome back to another Fabulous video on my channel, I'm Jay with Jay with Books Corner, and today we are talking about the five sci-fi books that are recommended to me by TikTok, mostly by TikTok, one of them is not, but 90% of it is. I'd like to mention a few things before we get started. There is a spoiler in this video, I directly tell you when the spoiler is, and also there are chapter times linked down below, and if you hear any noise that's above me or anywhere around me, my little sister is playing, I just had to film this intro. The whole point of this video was for me to dip my toes more deeper in the sci-fi to try to get a good understanding of what I personally enjoy in in that genre and i think i got a pretty good understanding i don't have a full understanding to say there's certain other genres that i'm much more clear in like i like this i like this i like this but this one i would say that i have a better understanding Sometimes you gotta pick her up, you know what I mean? I would say I have a better understanding of the sci-fi genre and different things I think I would really enjoy in it with this video. The books you'll be seeing in this video are Skyward, Murderbot Number 1, All Systems Red, Benti, A Psalm of Wild Built, and Gideon the Ninth. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the first one. I hope you guys enjoy. I just kind of want to change the location, so I decided I'd film the first update for Skyward up here. Skyward is written by Brandon Sanderson. The only other thing I've ever read or tried to read from Brandon Sanderson is The Way of Kings, and I do believe I'll be reading The Way of Kings. I know I will for a different video this year, so this was a much better choice. The Way of Kings is a high fantasy novel. This is a not so high sci-fi novel. I don't even know if they do count as like a high sci-fi novel. I know there's like very, very much more like driven science fiction novels, which is on this list. We have a few on this list as well. Well, and then we have some like pretty much more like true sci-fi novels which when i think true sci-fi i think of like stargate or Battlestar galactica mass effect that type of thing and i think of like true sci like science fiction novels it's somehow my brain can separate them is like the martian you know what i mean and so i know i have a few like the martian on this but i also know i have a few like skyward skyward follows a girl as the beginning of the book her dad ends up betraying the entire fleet and escaping without like leaving his post mid battle air like in the air but she is then you know basically like told she is a coward from that point forward and they went out with her into flight school because of that thing she ends up getting into flight school and the book does follow her while she's in flight school i love the writing so far i think it's amazing it's very easy to follow and i find it very like enthralling and i'm curious to see where the story is going so good for brandon sanderson for doing that i also find it not super confusing and also very like easy digestible i'd say like science science fiction is very hard to digest and 96 percent of the time i'm only paying attention to like every other paragraph because like it's mostly science jumble that i don't understand and i hope is real but i couldn't tell you and then this one i feel like it's more believable and i can like immerse myself more deeply into that story even though this is the ungrounded realistic version of it this is the fantasy side of sci-fi right where you're like yeah space battles i'm sure one day will happen i'm sure people will be living in space and things and that scares me i don't want to talk about it too much but it's super cool to see it in a book form and to be able to read it that way so that's that's so far my opinion on skyward it's super duper good i want to say i'm like 30 percent into it and i'm super curious i'm super duper intrigued and i will definitely probably be finishing the series as long as and as long as the last little bit goes but i definitely want to read more and that's always a great sign for a first book in this in a vlog like this that's everything i got for you i'm gonna say i'm between 16 70 percent into it so I have a very good chunk read. I'm not exactly sure. I've been upstairs all day. My mom went out of town for family stuff. So I've been watching my little sister. So I've been reading and writing and just doing a really chill full things and enjoying it. This book is phenomenal. <laughs> this is going to be a five. Maybe based on the ending. Some re reflection of this. I don't think I'm getting the exact thing I wanted out of this video so far. The one thing I do know right off the bat is I like just based on my reading of The Martian. I like less sciencey science fiction. So I'm wondering that's why a lot of people recommend me war books, like science fiction and war novels, because I think I would probably enjoy those. I just don't think I'm gonna enjoy the ones from the 70s. I'm looking for more upper date ones. I'd also be really curious if anybody's ever written, like, you know, how cafes and lattes exist for cozy fantasy. We'll eventually read though, read that if they want these videos as well. I wonder if anybody's ever written something out of those lines for a sci-fi novel where you're on like a planet and you're just like literally doing nothing. I think it could be really good. Like if no one's written it, maybe off to look into it. That's where I'm at. I really like the story. The story's very good. There's not really anything else I can tell you without spoilers. We're just gonna keep it as I'm really enjoying it. It keeps me guessing. I have a few theories, which is really nice. It's been a long time 
since I've been able to theorize, I'm curious to see if any of those answers will happen in this book, as this is book one of like four so far, and I've heard there's more. I will definitely continue on to the sequel, and can't wait to read more of this series. I don't know when I'll get to that, but hopefully later on this year, I can at least read the next like one or two. There's a lot of in-between novels, which I can get a hold of, and so I gotta figure out the pacing of that. As if you guys did not know me, I like reading all novellas for all series. I like knowing all of the information. That's something I gotta look into. Overall, the writing here is phenomenal and much easier to digest than other Brandon Sanderson I've tried in the past. This is a great entry for me, as I'm gonna be moving over to more of his tougher stuff as well throughout the next few months. The characters are phenomenal. The romance is little, but I have a feeling there's like a few budding ones, and it's gonna be handled very well. The only thing that I think I'm missing, and I'm wondering if better other authors who are much more in this space and has written many more things, are space battles. There is a lot of them throughout the novel. There's a lot of simulations and things, and there's a lot of technical terms for it. Very easily understandable technical terms. And we're talking about dog fights and a bunch of other stuff. I just can't visualize them as well as I normally can visualize things. And I think that's just because I don't think there's enough going on in the scenes of the space battles, in my opinion. There is a lot, but I just, I think it's a little drier, or not as fleshed out, not as in-depth. I think this book probably tops out by like 130,000, 130,000 words, maybe a little more than that. And I'm looking for more like a sci-fi book that probably tops out about 150. Because I think that extra 20,000 in details, not so much story or character or anything, because I think those are acing all the parts here. I think with like little minimalist details, which I'm talking about here, I think is where this book is failing. So I wonder if that's because it's YA. So we'll talk about that as I go into more adult novels. I do have really short sci-fi on this list. I'm hoping some of them are just like on planet stuff as well because I love a book set in a different planet that has nothing to do with space. But I don't like sci-fi books. I, I like sci-fi books doing one or two things so far in my my reading of them. I really enjoy sci-fi books that are like this where we're in a battle and we're training for a battle in a school setting. That seems to be like really my jazz right now. I also really like a sci-fi book that only takes place in a single space shuttle with minimal characters. That shit's good to me. <laughs> and so far, I have a feeling I'm gonna really like sci-fi novels that only take place on a planet with very little leaving that planet. Maybe like a crash landing on a planet, you gotta survive, something like those lines. That's my thought on this process, in my opinion. Skyward by Brendan Sanderson is what we're talking about, obviously. The Skyward was amazing, it was a five star. It made me tear up a little by the end and I felt like the character development and character arc worked perfectly and I was really curious and I kept guessing throughout the entire way. And the reveal that I thought was gonna happen did not happen, which I really liked. And I felt like visually the story became more like I could imagine it better. So for the first book in this five sci-fi book, book one was a success. Yay! I did learn some things. I like a good school setting. I already knew this, but I like it in sci-fi as well, which is nice. I tend to like a more brutal plot. This one had a lot of deaths in it, which I was really shocked by because it is YA. And I thought the stakes were extremely high the entire way through, which I really liked as well. Overall, it was great. Let's jump into the next one, whatever that might be. First, 25% update for Benti goes as following. It involves a girl who is on Earth here to separate her all these different clans and stuff, and her clan is really looked down upon. Her clan doesn't try to go out to explore outside space. They try to explore deeper into the Earth, and she gets accepted into a university on Mars or on Venus or something or those lines, a different planet. And her parents shun her, her parents tell her that she goes, she'll never be welcomed back into the family, but she goes anyways. And it's about her journey, so far she hasn't even gotten there yet, but it's about her journey to the planet and probably in this school. It's very short, it's like 160 pages long, so I don't know how much we're going to explore, but something cool just happened, an action thing, I don't want to spoil it. I'm very much intrigued, she's an engineer. She is a someone who takes things apart, and so I'm curious to see what that's gonna evolve into the story as well. I also do know this is book one of a series, and so we'll see if I want to continue on with it after this first one is over as well. Okay, I'll let you guys at 50% if I have anything more to add, if not the 75% mark, so forth if I have nothing to add when it's over. So without getting anything away, I don't want to give anything away. I feel like I won't do a 75% check-in, but at least wanted two for you guys before we do an outro with my final thoughts. I'm really liking it so far. I like the character a lot. She's very spunky. She has a lot of heart to her, which is really cool because of everything else running around her does not. And she's currently experiencing things with other creatures. We also have learned that she's human and she's like one of the only humans on her planet. We also learned the ship that she is on 
is also not human, which is kind of cool. So it's very sci-fi, exactly what we're looking for. Very different from anything I've read so far in this genre. Not mad about it. I just have a feeling I'm not going to like them. We'll see if I like short sci-fi. I'm not really sure yet. That's a lie. I know that's a fantasy. Never mind. I like short fantasy, so we'll see if I like short sci-fi. That's all I can really tell you, though. I can't really tell you what's going on or plot things because I would count those as spoilers because the book is so short. Just know that I am enjoying it and that I would recommend it so far. I'll come in for a final update when I'm done and we can have like a full conversation and once again if I have any spoilers and stuff I'll tell you. I want to come here and give you guys the last check in for Benti. Benti ended up being a four and a half for me personally. I really liked the discussion cultures that were discussed here. I also liked how once the story got going you realize where things are happening on the ship and where that story progressed. It went in a very much different direction, a darker direction than I was expecting. It made very intrigued for the rest of the series that I've now known is a trilogy, which is pretty cool. So I will definitely be checking out the other ones with next month or so. I'm sure I'll go around to it. I really like the character as well, the main character of Benti. And she held herself like nicely. And even though she was scared most of the story, you could also feel like this very strongness about her. And I think it worked really well with the actual like conversation of sci-fi throughout the novel. I think this is what you would classify as maybe more under the lines of light sci-fi. Due to the fact it's a less than 100 page, 100 page novella, I think there cannot be as much sci-fi as one was expecting, but it was a lot more action packed than I was expecting. Uh, more, a lot more people died in it than I also was expecting and it was quite graphic for it being such a short novel. Either way, I very much enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. We are starting all systems red. I'm giving you guys my first 25% check-in. I'm like 30 something percent into it. And this one follows a murder bot. Murder bots are commissioned and made to go out on these like dangerous quests if you need to murder things. And we learned very early on that this murder bot was made very cheaply. He, or I'm assuming it's a guy, the narrator is a guy, which is why we're, I'm giving it male gender pronouns, but let's say they, them. They are very much under the lines of like, stupid but it's also very cute they have like a lot of anxiety about like talking with humans and stuff they're keeping a lot of secrets because they're not like commissioned by the government actually but they keep saying that they are and they're actually quite dumb and they keep causing them like their crew a lot of problems throughout the first like 30 percent which i find very funny also they're addicted to reality television who cannot relate to that so even though the bot is supposed to murder you i find them very sweet and very like a very lovable narrator for this series i know there's at least like seven or eight of them in this series so i'm very curious to see where the story is going and if it's going to end in a way that i'm going to want to pick up the next one so far out of series we have read i've been very much interested in the sequel so we'll see if this is another one of those continuations and maybe down the line maybe i'll save all these sequels for another video where we read exclusively sci-fi sequels of books from this video let's go ahead and hop off here so i can go back and listening to it i couldn't really tell you what the point is yet once again they're just really trying to distract his crew so they wouldn't die that's really like what the bulk of the story is so far the very funny and charismatic main character that you can't help but love i wanted to give one more update before i do my my final update for Murderbot, all systems red. We now have a pretty good understanding of what the story is about, and so I feel like I can really just give my opinions if I'm liking it, if I'm not liking it. I'm very much liking it. Very much a sci-fi story that I was looking for. Not so much the main character, I do like the main character quite a bit, enough that I would read more books just for the main character. My thing here is, oh, okay, cool. what I'm really looking forward to, or what I'm really enjoying is the tiny sci-fi elements that there are. There's been a whole exploration part, which was really, really good. A dead colony, which was pretty cool, kind of. I think it's all been handled very well with this conversation of a murder bot and a murder bot that's rogue. Uh, all things are very intriguing, and I guess their main character is fat. And the side characters are good. They're not great, but they're, they're fine. Overall, very much enjoying myself. Do I think it's going to be a five? Probably not. But also, I don't know if I went into this thinking it was going to be a five. I think I went into this thinking, hoping it'd be like a four. And I think it's going to come out to be about there, which is more suitable. See, I, I say this, short fantasy, I can give a five. Sci-fi, I'm not sure if short sci-fi, I can ever get a five. I have yet to find one that I'm like, yeah, this is a five. Short horror, I can give a five. Short romance, I know I can give a five, depending on the romance. And normally those ones, they have to be part of a series and they have to be like novellas in a series. So they can already have some of the character development already done, but they can get fives. I don't know if they're original. I would have to be more short romance in a, like original formatting. Where the characters begin and end in a short format. Okay. That being said, 
I'll see you guys soon. Hi, I want to come here and give you guys an outro for Murderbot before we jump into the next book. Murderbot ended up being a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I think I've changed around some other scores. We'll talk about those in the outro. With Murderbot, I really liked all the concepts and the world building particularly here. There's a ton of world building in this one short book. I think it's like 140 pages. I definitely feel like for sci-fi for me personally, unless it's like really engrossing sci-fi, it needs to be more than 100 pages. This one just didn't do it like Binti did it. I don't think it had that like the other aspects that Binti had. This one had more found family and trying to like understand one person like who they are and if you can go against the, the code that is put forward for you which was really interesting. Murderbot himself, or themselves, was super an interesting character to follow, and I had to ask myself, is this a character that we'll be following for six more books, or because it is called the Murderbot Diaries, are we just following different Murderbots in this world, because we do know that there's more than one. Overall, I very much enjoyed myself while reading it, and I will definitely continue on with the second one. All the books so far that I've read, if there's a sequel, I will be picking it up to see. Binti, I think I'll read the three, because it's a trilogy, and then like I said, Skyward also. So far, we are making a TV are kind of in a way for sequels sci-fi books which is pretty cool i will update you guys well let's go ahead and start the next clip let's go ahead and start the next book gonna do the intro for a psalm of wild built this is an interesting concept okay so earlier i was like do you think they make cozy fantasy or cozy sci-fi where it's just like you're running a barkeep yeah they kind of do it's a thing and i'm not sure yet if that's exactly what this is i really do hope it's like a medium paced story it's so short as it is it clocks in like 180 pages that like i feel like a shorter like smaller sci-fi like this could be like perfect we do realize the character is non-binary we're not sure right off the bat if the character themselves identifies as non-binary or if everybody in the world is non-binary we can't figure I, I don't know that yet but they always talk about themselves and they then pronouns so that's what i'm going to be using here when talking about the character we don't have a direct name yet and so until we do i also be mentioning them as just they them we do realize that they have a lover or they had a lover that was a guy before obviously this is talking about a lot of different clear topics which is really cool and really fun to see in a sci-fi world i think sci-fi is a great world just like fantasy to talk about these things and i think for a long time there i feel like a lot of people didn't feel like they could talk about these things in, in a more adult setting i feel like in ya it's been talked about before but these are adult books this is an adult this is about someone who is deciding to leave home or this is about someone who is saying that they're going to leave their home. They're going to leave their family behind. Hone Nards, they have a whole goodbye. There's several moments where they can turn back from it. But instead, they want to go and they want to try out these new hobbies. They want to expand the horizon on things. And so they go and they make a bunch of tea. And they sit down and they wait for people's problems. And right away, they realize as this person came and sat down and talked about her dead cat. Very sad. They soon realize that they are not cut out for the job that they designed themselves. They didn't go through any training. They didn't do any things around it. They just kind of threw themselves into it and they soon realize that they maybe are not equipped for it and that's so far the first like 15 percent of this book so no spoilers there you, you learn it right in the beginning which is probably like the first like 25 30 pages i'm very excited to continue on and to read more of it now we're halfway through a psalm of the wild built and so i think i would i would deem this clip a spoiler for anybody out there now i'm pretty much clear Obviously, idea. This is a soul-searching book. Our character Dex. They are going on this journey of self-discovery and a whole bunch of other stuff. And in this journey, they end up coming across a robot. Dex learning what robots do and things are those lines. But yeah, I'm liking it so far. The writing is very kind, very sweet. Um, not very flowery, but you can just you can feel the sweetness in it, which is which is a nice feeling overall. A plus. Um, I don't think it's a 5. I, it's also not giving me 4 vibes halfway through, so it might be another 3.75, 3.5. See, once again, I still have quite a bit to go. It could turn around. I want to come here and give you guys the final check-in for... I don't know where I'm landing on it. I understand the point. I also understand why it was nominated for a Good Reach Choice Award. I don't know if it was a write and ballad or not. I don't remember when this book came out. Write and ballads could still be the thing. They're not a thing anymore. They haven't been since 2020, right? Or 2021? 2021 is when it was, right? Either way. So it could have been a write and ballad. Maybe a lot of people liked it. And I can understand why a lot of people liked it. It didn't go in a direction I thought it was going to go into, and I'm not going to spoil it like here. I'll leave it up for you guys to figure out the relationship between these two characters and the journey that they go on. I wouldn't read more from it. I think I'd read more from this author. I'd be curious to see a bigger tale. It was also not as cozy as a hoping. Like, I really just want some random ass bar and a random ass planet 
and just like what they're doing in everyday life kind of cozy and so i'm gonna continue searching for that and if there's not one out there maybe i'll write one myself because you know if you have the skills that they tell you almost every single time is if you can do it you should do it yourself just because i don't know where i'm landing on it between a three and a four for sure somewhere in there it's nothing less than a three but i can't figure out on the scale where i land i was kind of bored a little i found myself spacing the most in this one even though it was like supposed to be there is no action at all it simply is a it is in the it's a mundane sci-fi i guess and i guess the one i was looking for is like a mundane sci-fi but i think like a very cozy sci-fi can also have like a little bit of action little bits i mostly want like the everyday working up i don't know maybe i'll find a good analogy eventually this was not it this was not exactly what i was looking for it is queer which i do love and it's the only one i think on this list i don't know if there's any queer characters in gideon the ninth if so then that one i don't think so this is the only one on the list not that it's important so far in oh i guess skyward i think maybe had one no i don't ever think that was confirmed not important for the books that i'm reading nonetheless i'm hoping that gideon maybe has like a b plot romance i could really go for a romance story right now in this type of world so lots of possibilities i did not explore every genre as, as like i was hoping to be fair i had other ones on this list that would have probably dived more into those genres i hope to you guys once i start my next book I am 30% in to keep the money and figured I'd give the first update. And this is about a necromancer. Ends up having to go to this school and it's about her journey like in this school. There's been quite a few action sequences. I thought this was YA and now I'm wondering standing. Maybe it's adult. I also think she might be bisexual. Okay, I can't figure it out. So that's also pretty cool. It's a little nervous I wasn't going to read any more queer ones. But this is a mic. That's not going to be the case. That's nice. The action seems to be really well written, which I also very much enjoy. And the characters getting herself is fucking hilarious. She's all one liners, which I really like. Overall, I'm having a great time. I'll let you guys between 50 and 60%. Maybe have more like a clear answer to what the book is actually about. Just because I don't really know how much more I have to update you on Gideon the Ninth, I'm just gonna update you guys now. I am officially 50% into this book. It's taken me a while. To be fair, I've had a lot of personal shit go down in the past like two weeks that obviously were unexpected. I don't really blame Gideon. She did nothing wrong. She didn't help, but she did nothing wrong. This book isn't putting me in a reading slump. I just don't think I've been in the mood to read because reading is more like a fun hobby of mine. But this is the book that I predominantly been reading fun i i once again i like i'm, I'm liking it so far. um i like the challenges and tribulations i really like her and Haro's relationship as dynamic as it is i like the action i think the combat's really well written Gideon herself is fucking hilarious which i think i mentioned in, before in a previous clip the first clip was a little bit of a mess and i like the ship that they're on i like the fact that i like the idea and the way they explain the ninth and different classes and stuff i do find it a little confusing but from what i understand that's just how the book's written and it's how it's i also know that the continuing sequels are just as confusing i get lost very easily with this book i end up getting really distracted very easily that's very weird rare for me as i don't get distracted very easily normally and yeah it's just it's just very rare and that was one of the other takeaways i had is that like i was enjoying myself while reading it i couldn't focus on it for very long which sucks i do have to finish it within the next like day or so i will up to you guys probably in the same spot i'm sorry at the next point the 100 point i'll be in a different chart my hair will probably look different but up to you guys then hello i want to come in here and close out this book Gideon the ninth like i said you saw me again this time i don't think i have a beard i don't think i i think i had a beard the first time i don't know either way my face got shaved in the process of this vlog Gideon the ninth ended up being a four i think 3.75 to a four i think on most platforms you're gonna see it rated a four underneath me two things i took away from this book one i need to reread it not because i like i want to reread it i think there's parts of this book i want to reread for sure i got the gist the grasping elements of this story but a lot of it did kind of go over my head like a lot of people said it would a lot of people actually think this book is best read on the third time so that's funny it's an interesting way to write a novel and i also heard that as they continue on they get more and more complicated because the timeline gets more and more weird which is funny because i didn't have any problems with the timeline in this one 
and let me know if that's an actual claim or not. Let me know if that's true to this series. And maybe it's not. Maybe I read something wrong. Or maybe someone lied. It's also possible. It's the internet. I really like Gideon as a character. I thought she was particularly really funny. I really liked a lot of her quirks. And I really enjoyed where her character went. And I also, I just absolutely loved the queer romance in the, in the forefront. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't even know it was in it. And... It was a very nice surprise and I mention it here just because I don't think a lot of people talk about it. She, I don't know what Gideon is and I don't even know if Gideon knows what she is, but she's definitely not straight because she has lots of opinions about a lot of people and a lot of them are how dashing they look. <laughs> which I love, like I adore. And I also find the romance in this story, the central romance, which I'm not gonna talk about here because it does contain spoilers, to be quite sweet and quite nice. So overall, it was a, was a surprise. The whole book was a surprise. It was gory. I really thought this was YA. This is definitely an adult novel. And it kept throwing me for that loop because every time I would get back into the mindset, oh, this is YA. And then I'd be like, haha, bitch, no, it's not. And yeah, so that's getting the ninth. I don't really have much to say except I did not realize the trope in like sci-fi fantasy novels of someone going and fighting in like this like temple type of thing was so big. They're not in a temple but they're all fighting to get keys to unlock this like tomb. I didn't realize how big that was. This is like the sixth book I've read this in in the past like three months. There's that. I don't mind it. So I'll still learn that about me. All good things. All right. I'll see you guys for the outro. Let's wrap up these five books that I read. So the first book that I read for this vlog, I'm assuming you guys saw uh, Skyward by Brandon Sanderson first. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson was a phenomenal recommendation and a phenomenal read. It was the standout out of this video. It's the only book on this list that got a five out of five for me. And yeah, good for it. Truly, nothing else could hold it like a candle to it, which is great. I definitely, this is the series that I'm most anticipating reading more from. Then I read Binti. I don't remember who wrote Binti. I'm very sorry. And once again, this was another, a good book. It was a, my first taste of short sci-fi and I was pleasantly surprised. I've learned that I don't love all short sci-fi, but this one I didn't mind. I thought it went an interesting direction that I would be curious to read the rest of the trilogy. So that's nice. Then we have a uh, Psalm of the War of the Wild Built, which was a very different novel than I was expecting. I definitely still think you can find like cozy, random people living their lives sci-fi out there, and I would be very curious to find one of those. I'm so interested in this one had some of those elements, and I thought some of the conversations about life and why you move on, why you live on, and uh, why comfort can be something you don't chase but maybe you run away from. Be very enticing and very interesting it but wasn't my favorite this one ended up being like a 3.5 then lastly i read getting a ninth by terrison mazier i think and this one was a four i think i'm landing on a four it did everything right except it just wasn't perfect for me i think on reread this could possibly be a five i actually don't know i think it could like go up in a four i don't know if it could ever breach the point though because there's still a few things i did get that i didn't really enjoy i think the writing's just a little too confusing on first read to rate it higher than that i'm sure some people walked out thinking it was a masterpiece and is everything they ever wanted so i don't judge you for that but i just don't know if that was for me but i very much enjoyed it i'm glad i read it I'm glad I was pushed to read it, I should say. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this five vlog video thingy, and I'll see you guys all next month for another one. I have a bunch of other videos on the channel, so please do stick around. But these will become monthly. I have another group of books that I'm hoping to get to next month, and we'll see how it goes. But thank you guys so much for watching, and if you have any other recommendations in sci-fi, please let me know. I will continue to explore sci-fi in this type of video where I read five more, but it might be another subsection. We might read five like high sci-fi. We might read five dark sci-fi. I don't know if these are actual things, but I'm coming up with names, okay? Five cozy sci-fis. You know, five romance-centric sci-fis. Five sci-fis without romance. I don't really know, to be honest with you, to be fair. You get my point here. There are much more ways to go down the sci-fi route and dig into another corner of this. And so if there's any particular ones you're like, oh you should totally check this out or you should check this subcategory of sci-fi out based on what i rated these and why i like certain of these books let me know in the comments down below i do think romance needs to be a part of it i'm gonna play it out there i think the ones without romance i didn't enjoy the most the ones with romance at any point in the book i really enjoyed and all the books have romance in this degree so i do think romance in my sci-fi is a necessary just just to point it out. I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. But either way, I'll talk to you guys all next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and goodbye.